moving forward, we, we can go with the ethics ordinance. Um, again, I, I did send all of council. Did all of council get this ethics ordinance today? Mm -hmm. Yes, you did. Councilman Davis? Yes. Councilman McVeigh? Yes. yes. Councilman Lewis, did you get the ethics ordinance today? Uh, yes, I did. Okay. Excellent. Um, Jennifer McBride, you are in the audience. I did see you out there. You better not be hiding. There she is. Jennifer, you did come before council, I believe it was in August, with this ethics ordinance, correct? Yes. Uh, right. Um, and I believe you floored almost the entire room with what you had put together. It's also something that I feel very strongly about, so strongly that I can't even find it. Uh, there, where did it go? Um, no, I do feel very strongly about it, Jennifer. I just can't find it. So I have a copy. Hold it with you. Turn it down. So, I do feel, um, considering, and this is just my personal opinion, considering the recent events and um, perhaps even the past few years and maybe even previous, um, I, I, I'm not sure that this type of ordinance could have come fast enough. Okay. Um, I will be recommending, after Rich and his crew take a look at it, that we are, uh, that we do implement this local municipal ethics ordinance. Um, after, again, after Rich takes a look at it. And uh, I can say that while in attendance at the New Jersey Legion Municipality Seminar this year for newly elected officials, which Councilman Davis had uh, recommended, we had discussed something similar to this. About 15 to 20 of the municipalities, uh, the lawyer, Bill Burns, who had given the, the uh, seminar, who was, giving, who was giving the demonstration, had said about 15 to 20 of the municipalities in New Jersey um, had these in effect, and they are quite effective. Because what it does allow, uh, what it allows the public to do and allows. Uh, thank you, Mr. Sada. Don't close the door, to that, sir. Can't close. Can't close the door. Mr. Sada? Yeah, I'll let close the door. Mr. Sada? Yeah, now, Mr. Sada? It's an open meeting. We can't close the door because it's an open meeting. We can ask them to keep it down. Loud again, I'll to tell them. Um, I do feel that this is very important. Are you going to tell them? I'm going to call them. Go on. Close the other door. You got him out here, man. Good job. Um, as, a, as a newly elected public official, um, and Councilman Wilkes, who served back in the 90s, I believe that in integrity and, and ethics are probably the most paramount, extremely paramount to our position. And you, as a resident, should be able to hold us accountable. So if we can commit an ethics violation, where do you currently go, right? You currently go to DCA. Um, and I believe the problem is that it's very, it's a very lengthy process. Whereas if we have the municipal, if we have a municipal ordinance here, you go to that body. And I believe the way that it's written is fair. Um, I, you know, I didn't see, an, I didn't see an issue with this. I didn't see one where one political party has, you know, um, an advantage over the other because it seems to me like it's, it's equal. Um, I, I don't know. I'd really rather gather the perspective of the other officers, uh, the other uh, members of our governing body, and then we can go ahead and, and read it aloud. This way, you guys can yell at us later. Um, the only thing I can say is because it's a work session, we've already had public comments. You can't, you can't, you can comment on it when it comes to draft for the first reading. Or you have my email. You're more than welcome to go ahead and email me with any questions that you may have. But we've already spent an hour, two hours, speaking about parking. So what I do want to do is move forward and get everyone. I didn't ask during public comments that you have to have it read. I'm going to read it. Oh, I'm reading it. Good. Oh no, I'm reading it. I just want to. Oh my god. I couldn't actually read it. There's just no questions. Um, so 
This being said, I'd like to Councilman McVeigh, did you have anything to say with regard to the ethics ordinance? You know where I stand on <laughs> ethics and integrity. Uh, I think it was uh, drafted with a smart and direct thought. I'm not, I'm not one, personally, if you're, if you're asking me, I'm not one for a gray area. Um, I, like, I like hard line, I like hard rules. And uh, if you have not uh, heard this before or seen anything, I think this is a very well written document. Councilman Davis. Yeah, my, uh, my thoughts are, I, we, just to establish, we do have an ethics ordinance in place. We do? Yes. And yes, no, I know. Yeah. This would be replacing the bottom portion. Yes. Um, uh, well, I think it's more than that, because it's sad, but most of the things are duplicated from what we have in the current ethics sure. So it's always in, it's in accordance with the local government ethics law. Uh, my personal opinion is that just because Phillipsburg is a small town and these appointees would be coming from the council, I think that the people of Phillipsburg are better served knowing that there's going to be an impartial audience listening to their complaints. Because it appears, according to the way the ordinance is authored, it still follows the same complaint process that would go through the DCA Local Finance Board, which is our current ethics board. Um, and like I said, I think that uh, people who are removed from the situation in Phillipsburg are more likely to give a fair and just outcome because there's too much possibility for people who know people in town to have either the appearance of conflict or an actual conflict. So that's my opinion. Thank you, Councilor. Councilor Woods? Yeah, I kind of read it fast, but I, in a way I agree with it, in a way I don't, because I don't feel where your wife should be involved in it, because she's not really an elected official. It says that she has to hand in her um, w-2 or whatever she has to show her finances um, in that and I don't think that's right Excuse if me. I read it right um, Ms. McBride am I right do you mind if we um, WG, you're talking about general um, the finance law which yeah, is currently state statute sure. nothing of that about w-2 is currently in here as municipal employee or elected official, you have to file with that every, your, your financial, financial disclosure yes. order every single year. Anyway, right. there, there's nothing about, to, I have to report my husband's income. Right, and this is something well, we already required. Right. Right. Yeah, this is already this financial required. disclosure form that she's yes. talking yes. about. But right. And yeah. that's, that's currently in every single ethics ordinance. Right. That's why it's in this ordinance, because it has to be in there as well. Okay. Yeah, no, but a lot of people misinterpret that. You do not have to disclose any dollar amounts. You just have to disclose source. the source. source. Correct. source. And it's the same thing. But that says dollar amount. If I'm you know, mistaken. would you like to tell me which one? Where? Well, I, I, I just didn't look at it. Yeah. Because. Yeah. We don't have a big one. We'll make sure that it comes like. Yeah. Yeah. No, but from what I. What if I. Financial disclosure. Um, Oh, no, that amount you're talking about is for personal appearances or speeches in a uh, yearly aggregate of over $250. That is actually through the state statute, which is yeah. compliant with financial disclosure laws. Right. With an honorary. Nothing about W-2s. If you're going out public speaking as a, an elected official, you have to report that. Okay. It's pretty sad that if only 11 communities out of 456 500 have something like this in effect, yeah, that's a pretty poor percentage. I agree. Again, I have to limit comments from the public body, Mr. Timmy, until the first reading. Okay, so we can get through this this evening. I, I, I do agree with you, and I understand where you're coming from, because that's where I'm coming from. My personal opinion is, it, of course, it, it does differ from Councilman Davis's um, opinion. I'm not saying that he's wrong. I'm saying that, um, unfortunately, it's been my perception as of late, there have been some violations. And I'll be honest with you, Councilman, I don't even know where to go to anymore. So I, I make phone calls and, and nothing happens. But I know that if it's here in Phillipsburg, something is going to happen. Now, I can only hope that those that we appoint 
would not allow any of those external influences to take over and tell them how to vote or how to find or I, I, I could only depend upon uh, and rely on humanity. Say that. I do understand your position though. I respect it. However, I just disagree. Okay. Um, I can read the ordinance or yes. we can provide copies. Would you like me to read it? Yes. If we have a copy to yes. for the, 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 the whole ordinance. <laughs> man, 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 no. We can get copies. How about I give you a copy to take with you? Yeah, yeah. please. Yeah. It is very lengthy. I'll give you a copy to take with you. Thank you. And it, because it, it is a lot of pages. Okay, and, and then there will be a time at the next meeting when we can do the there most and There most certainly will be. And it doesn't mean this is going to pass. This is going to be proposed. Okay? It could be shot down 3-2. It could be shot down 5-0. It could be passed 5-0. It's got a scary name. Oh, I like the name. And I'll tell you why. Because, again, we ran on integrity. We ran on ethics. And um, that's something that you'll never see me sway away from. So here we go. Thank you. You're very welcome.